so with denatured alcohol I wiped all this down now once you've put any fiberglass on the vessel you want to stop using all acetone or solvent you want to stick to denatured alcohol because acetone will soften your repairs and cause them to fail prematurely now what I have here is I've replaced this part here on the sides and it won't show up in this so I'm gonna grab something now even though this is a rounded part of the vessel you can put something up and it'll show you show you you got a little gap there of how many layers you need to build up right there and you can see where it touches right there where it's not touching up here not sponsored by Swanson or any tool companies at this time but I just grabbed this it's really too big to do what I need to do if I had something that would go from this point to just this point and I could use both hands see if I can lock this under here and then do the curvature and then that gives you the ability to actually see how much layering up you need to do from here where it's touching to back here where I'm holding it against with my hip but you got a couple more layers to add in here so we'll feather into this right here and then we'll start feathering in trying to make it exactly where this damage is at to fill this lip back out and give it back its strength that it had before the damage and we've had to go down a little below there because this portion of the vessel was also cracked in here so you've got those things to keep an eye on whenever you're doing repairs you need to grind away if you have hairline cracks, you need to grind down. If they were down to here, I would have had to go down. But my crack stopped about there. So I went inch, inch and a half further with my grinder to reveal any hidden cracks. And then I put a little bit of fiberglass over the problem. Ties it all back together, keeps it from spider webbing. Uh, I'll cut an edge and line it along here so that it doesn't interfere with the mechanical portion of this and this is supposed to have a little plate that covers it so I'll I'll keep my line straight here because this is crushed it's been repaired I ground out most of what it was uh, and once again it was repaired right up and over the paint uh, may have that piece here it was repaired you can see the paint stuck to their repairs paint stuck to their repairs they just repaired whoever repaired it repaired it over paint and it probably had paint it may have had wax it may have had anything on it but it just you saw it in that other video it just flaked off so I've got one other crack here that I've exposed so I'm going to increase my area up around this and I'll relieve this and I'll come across this way but before I do I want to take this flathead screw out because that flathead screw needs to go back inside the vessel uh, that's what they did to secure their clam I'm guessing at Flying Scott I found another damaged spot back here I'll come back to these spots I've got a couple spots where some old stuff that's no longer used has been removed I'll grind these down, repair them. This just looks like cosmetic. There's no cracking in the fiberglass, no soft decking. I'll go around the whole vessel and inspect everything. I'll uh, take out the tiller handle. We'll sand it down, revarnish it. I've got these little holes where things have been drilled in. I'll grind all these down because they're just areas that are going to let water eventually, it doesn't feel soft yet, 
that what will happen is eventually water will weep into these little holes and get between your fiberglass and start delaminating during seasonal changes like freezing, extreme hot, whatever. This looks like something here. But if you'll see where they had the old blocks up here that have been taken out, I'll repair that since I've got it out. We, we no longer use those little blocks that go there on the foredeck. So I'll grind those out and patch those. This darkening of color, this oxidation is mostly uh, pollen that just bakes onto the vessel. But the top of this vessel has been painted. So basically all I'll do is take a Scotch-Brite and wash it because I'm not gonna take the time on this particular vessel to sand all of this paint off and that's why I tell everyone, stay away from paint on your vessels. Your vessels are too flexible for paint. The paint just screws them up. Makes your deck slick too. Then you fall and bust your ass. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause this and set it up and uh, get some work started and I'll record it for you. Uh, ignore the Yukon. It's in here, it looks like somebody's changing the oil on it just in the way. All right, I'm gonna show you something real quick, one-handed, I've already started it. Prepping out my fiberglass mat. You know, I tell you, never buy folded fiberglass matting and you don't ever want it with a, let's see if I can get it up against something real. show you. You never want a straight edge on a patch that's in the center of a vessel. However, on this one, I do want straight edges on my repairs. So what I'm doing is I'm tearing out my lengths and they're twice as wide to three times as wide as what I need. And I am cutting them in a straight line with just a pair of shears. The reason for this, so let me show you the boat. And like I said, the reason is that we're not in the center, like in a patch here. Don't worry about these runs. That's just something that they be taken care of later. You always just take some light sandpaper and sand those off and then bring your finish up. Back to where I was talking to you about on point. I'm not worried about these little high, fine hairs that get knocked out like this because we're gonna make a piece that hangs over. But we have to build all of this up first along here because this is a good quarter to uh, seven sixteenths below on repair on what level it should be for to be a straight line and then we'll have to do a lot of work to get this line bowed the same as the curvature of the vessel and it's just a lot of grinding a lot of time but once we get this lip done, we're not worried about if it has a few hairs or if it has a separation or if it's a perfect line right here. It's uh, it's actually just gonna push up. It's not gonna curve up or over. This piece will actually hang over the side. You see, it's like a tablecloth. It just hangs over the deck and down to the side of the hull. And then this piece is the bottom and it's up and under, so it's, the clam right here in this effect makes the vessel watertight so you uh, you don't have to worry about it but that's the only reason I'm using a straight edge I'll just line the straight edge up along here and then as I line it up along this top of the clam I'll push it back down and under and try not to build this any thicker because this still has meat left to it. There's a low spot from here to here that was taken out. The cracks were all just isolated right here in this bend uh, because it was the part that just kind of opened up so it had it cracks that ran uh, along the line. They were uh, or along the water line you know above it but along the clam so these parts are easy 
to fix in that manner uh, what gives them the high difficulty rating is the fact that you're working on three curves it's one and it's two and then it's three so you've got well four if you count the bow of the hull so you're working on these but that's not a really a problem it will have a tendency to want to be straight from point A to point B on the bend of the hull and that's where we'll just build back up it'll work to our advantage because it'll give us a thicker a thicker hull here than it had from factory whenever I build it back up with fiberglass which may prevent this much damage from happening in the future and it's not if someone ties them up wrong it's when they tie them up wrong so let me get this paused and I'll set it back up on the tripod and we'll start hanging some glass because I'm having to work outside being forced to work out from under the climate control if this stuff sets off too fast, then it's just a cup of smoke and trash. The way my mixing stick right here. Now I've already dried the area with alcohol. I've sanded the area. I've wiped the area down. Uh, I will come back in and put a coat. I'm trying to keep some of it on the brush. It's like I'm pouring it all over the asphalt. But, um, I'll get a good layer in here before I start doing and then I just lay my cloth up now sometimes if you need a piece to if you need the extra helping hand of a piece to hang for you what you do is you prep this ahead of time and then you only mix a small batch you give it a few minutes to start tacking off and I can I do that better with uh, vinyl ester, laminating vinyl resin, than uh, epoxy. So, sorry, trying to stay focused on what I'm actually doing and talk to everybody there in YouTube world too. So, I put this on and it'll give me a place to hang it on. Now, if I need to wet out a piece, this is gonna to have to be built up anyway. I've already prepped it, sanded it, and gotten it ready for, to receive fiberglass, even though there won't be any allowed to be put on here. But resin won't hurt anything if I put resin up there. I can use this to wet out and just simply move from here to my side rail. I'm not going to do that unless I have to. And as always, I left one thing I needed. I left my little paper top in there. So I'll take this straight edge, kind of bend it. I'll take my straight edge and I'll put it up here. I've got two pieces. That's what she said. And I'm looking for this low spot here to here. Well, I'm gonna start filling that low spot in. And you'll notice I'm just tapping it right along the top line of the clam connection area. And if you start putting your fingers up like I did, you'll get fiberglass through your glove and onto your glove and then everything you touch will be sticky. I stopped just before I did that. That's not a habit that I have. I avoid that. Uh, Oftentimes, when I take my gloves off, there's maybe only one or two drops on it. And what I do, I load the brush, and this keeps me from having it all over the vessel and wasting. And I'll wipe it off on one side. Now, that will cause a little bit of bubbling, but it'll go back down into the bottom and it'll kind of level out. That will, in heat days like today, it's going to get close to 90. That's why I came in here at uh, five o'clock in the morning to start prepping everything. I have shop lights on the exterior that I've hung out here so I could get on these warm mornings and work. Now what I would normally do if the shop wasn't full of a vehicle is I would lower the mast and take it off the vessel and take all this inside into climate control. Uh, that's the beauty of working over here at Lake Norman Community Sailing when I travel over here to do their jobs 
is they have a climate control interior shop. Uh, I've taken down a lot of my videos of me working outdoors in boat yards. And uh, the reason I did that is my, my boat channel doesn't have enough subscribers yet to uh, monetize that stuff and YouTube was going ahead and taking the liberty to use my videos to advertise and I had no control over it and I wasn't making any money over it so if you're not going to pay me for it then you're not going to make money off of me uh, you already make enough so take it back to what it used to be YouTube where it was just uh, so many views got you some subscriptions instead of asking people to like subscribe and share and be your friend for life and so the next one i will i'll go ahead and wet the next one out because getting it to take this bend's a little sharper than i had anticipated so it's going to need a little, little wetting out maybe maybe not all right I usually don't start at the top and work my way down. I usually start it out down here and push it in and then work my way up. I was fortunate enough to get to set into a class on fiberglass repair and learn a few things. Now my dad, he was an auto body technician and he took fiberglass for the Corvette and other fiberglass vehicles that are out there and he knew he knew some stuff but my dad's one of those people that if you try to get him to explain stuff to you he'll he'll argue with you over things like uh, he doesn't have two weeks he only has 14 days and I just kind of sat back and I always thought he was just joking about that until much later in life I realized he was He's dead serious because he kept saying stuff like that. And I said, how many days are in a week? And he said, seven. And I said, what's, what's seven times two? And he said, shut up. He got mad at me. He told me to get out, go home, go to my house, leave. <laughs> so it was, it was something else, that conversation. I actually recorded it just because I thought, okay. Now he's not a drinker. He, I've, I've never, my dad has never drank into to be drunk in my life, and I'm 55, but he never has been a drinker. Let's start at the bottom and work my way up so I don't have to wet this out. But that's one thing I can say I'm proud of him about. He's he's never been a person to lay hands on my mom. He's not a woman beater. He's not a drunkard. He's mean as shit at times which i guess that's where i get it but yep it's too hot today my shit's going to cook off in my hands so i'm pretty much done here in a minute i can feel the heat building can't get inside the shop to work so i ain't gonna get but about four hours of work done today son of a bitch this pisses me off. You can feel the heat in your hand. It's getting ready to smoke. There it is. It's cooked off less than five minutes. It's trash. Nothing I can do with it. Son of a bitch. And what will happen is when it starts cooking off is you can't get a good good piece to lay down on the outside of the vessel. It starts pulling away from you. And your brush or a roller will start pulling the fiberglass that you're putting on the vessel back off the vessel. And it'll make it all porcupine. So I don't want that. That's not a that's not a good repair. 
I'm just trying to work the air bubbles out of it and work it down the surface and wet it out. But it's just, it's just trash. It's, it's already too hot here and it's not even eight o'clock in the morning yet probably. So this can wind up being a bad repair if you're not careful. So you don't tap and push hard, just lightly tap. Don't even bend the bristles on the brush and that works all the air bubbles out and it works all of the fiberglass down inside the resin and you got to work on this pretty quick now because it's cooking off and that's why I don't do my mobile repair business in the summer because you can't do much do mine in the winter time whenever I'm off season from mowing lawns and that works out pretty good so I'll send them an email that they need to get the truck out so I can get the boat in and work on it because it's cooking off in my hands before I can actually get the third layer of repair done and I need I need probably five six more layers right here to bring this back up to start coming across this thinned out spot from here to here the cups crackling and popping listen to it it just cooked off can't do anything in this heat so there's that screwed